Hello, this is Riding with Ree, and you are watching the very first episode of Equestrian Analysis, where we take a trending topic or something that's happening in the equestrian world and we discuss and we debate it, kind of in a video essay style. In today's Equestrian Analysis, we're going to be talking about why some riders are choosing to give up competition or give up horses altogether. If you follow me on Instagram, you will already know that we have debated this on Instagram stories and loads of you fed back with thoughts and your own experiences and also entered in on the polls. I'm going to start by sharing with you the results from the poll I did on Instagram stories and then we're going to dive into some of the reasons why people are choosing to give up competing or give up horses altogether in 2024. I've partnered with Wild to bring you this video. You may remember that I had the chance to try their natural deodorant in spring and I have not looked back. Now they're looking to shake up the culture of everyday bathroom products with their refillable body wash. The refillables themselves are 100% plastic free and compostable. They'll actually degrade faster than a banana peel. I've got two scents here but there are nine in total to choose from. It's suitable for all skin types including sensitive skin and it's made with natural and premium ingredients. Wild ships worldwide, has 20,000 five star trust pilot reviews and is a certified B Corporation. My promotion code is back for a limited time and gives you 20% off with code RE2024. You'll also find this code in the comments along with a link. So the first question I asked was, have you reduced the amount you're competing and or considered or have given up horses in the last year? So a really broad poll. 27% said yes, they had considered or given up competitions. 24% said yes, they had considered or given up horses. 9% said that they had done both and 40% said that they had done neither. So over 50% of the people that responded to this poll said that they were giving up horses or competitions. Now of course this poll is a snapshot of people, there were a few hundred responses from my Instagram followers who were online that day and I was also expecting more responses from people that this affected. So I'm not saying that this is representative of society, of course not more than 50% of us have or are considered giving up competing but I do think it's interesting and actually the idea for this topic came from the fact that I was on Facebook and in a lot of the groups that I'm in across um, dressage, show jumping, eventing and just equestrian local groups this topic was coming up more and more people just being like I think it's time to stop. Now the second poll I asked was if you've given up competitions why? And I gave four options. 46% said money was the reason that they'd given up competition. 22% of people said it was environment or this, the show environment. 17% said it was about their skill level. And 15% said it was time. So the overwhelming reason that people are stepping back from competition is money. And this is not surprising given the climate that we're in. And actually later in the video, we'll talk about some of the statistics that came out of a new national survey that spoke to horse owners. And this sort of pattern of money and time becoming an issue was also reflected in there. Finally, I asked people, if you've given up horses, why? And I asked the same four responses. 45% said money, 34% said enjoyment or environment, 13% said time, and 8% said their skill level. So again, when it comes to giving up horses completely, money is the leading factor, which is not surprising. But there, it's interesting to see that some of the other contributing factors, like the environment or the enjoyment of horses, was 34%, so it's considerably high. Now, I want to talk you through some of the responses that people shared with me and go through some of the themes. The key themes that I saw coming through as to why people give up competition or horses altogether were financial pressure, time and work-life balance, the environment and enjoyment, and horse welfare and the pressure on horses for competitions. So I'm going to take you through these one by one. Financial pressure was the leading reason, definitely the sense of cost of owning horses, preparing for competition. And there were a few different quotes that I want to read out to you when it came to that. So I've basically been forced to quit due to finance and also time. I work as a primary school teacher full time and I'm at the top of the pay scale. I moved to a rural and remote area for a cheaper cost of living and brought a smaller property with the aim of the stars lining up for me to get a horse. However, due to the hours I work, 8 to 5, and then again in the evening, roughly 7.30 till I go to bed, I just felt that even with a horse on full livery, I would be struggling constantly to provide the life and time I wanted to provide a horse or of mine. I also felt that getting the horse would cut time with my dog and reduce her quality of life. I also worried about the damage owning a horse would do to my long-term finances slash if I could afford to do it properly. I just wasn't happy for a shoestring budget. 
My dog has the best of everything travelling the UK for training and competition. I would want a horse of mine to have the best of everything too. I've stepped away from horses altogether, I think for a combination of reasons. One, for it to be more affordable, it's very time consuming. Two, if it's more efficient, it's more expensive. And with where I'm at in my career, I struggle to do either way. I went from sharing a riding school horse to lessons at a different place and then down to nothing, sadly. It's just so expensive to have lessons and get back into the swing and then share a riding school horse in order to even get to the point where I'd feel comfortable reaching out to Facebook group private shares in an environment where all the ads say no novices, experienced riders only. I gave up horses nearly a decade ago and spent years with absolutely no contact with them and felt that I was better off financially, more time to relax. Upon reflection, all I did with my newfound spare time was work longer hours. I'm now trying to get back into the horsey world and it is hard. Genuine horse people seem to be far and few between. Prices are astronomical even for horses with health issues, green for age, lack of basic foundations. It seems to be that a lot of the horse world has lost their love for the horses themselves and it's all about competing. And if you don't compete, people think, why are you even into horses? The whole vibe feels completely different than it did a decade ago and not for the better. It almost makes me think, do I really want to get back into it? The second theme that came through really strongly was time and work-life balance. A lot of people talked about the idea that they could own a horse, but that actually the idea of having that alongside all of their other hobbies was too much. And this definitely reflects this feeling that horses are all encompassing and that you can't do anything else and it's a tricky one I think there are other sports where you can have a balance of other hobbies but I think because horses are animals too they do take up a lot of our time especially if you're on DIY for example the other thing that came up a lot especially when it came to giving up competition was the idea that it takes such a long time to prepare for a show and then you're in the ring for maybe like four minutes the third theme that I saw come through really strongly and this is the one that I saw reflected in the Facebook group was the sense that the enjoyment of the environment has just changed or that the environment isn't what it was. Now this is really difficult because I think this is a trend across lots of different things. This idea of like looking back at the past with rose tinted glasses and thinking oh it used to be better back in my day you know. So I genuinely can't say for certain whether the competition environment has changed. I think Certainly for me, if I look at dressage specifically, which is the one that I spend more time in, I would actually say that the federations have spent a lot more time building grassroots opportunities like BD Quest and then in eventing if you look at the success of things like the Cotswold Cup which again was meant to be this sort of alternative to British eventing it does feel like these spaces are thriving but I definitely got the sense from the responses that people just don't feel either like they are enjoying the competition environment because of their nerves or because of all the effort that's gone in they can't get the same results that they get at home or that actually they just don't feel welcome in the horse world and this was something I saw particularly coming through from riders who came to horses later in life that they just didn't feel like they belonged there. Now whether or not that is something new I don't know. I think that's something that's been around for a long time but I was surprised to see it come through so strongly in the responses. So let me read you some of those now. I used to go to horse competitions and shows almost every weekend as a kid so sometimes it feels like I've been there, done that and I don't miss it. That being said I see other people and think it might be fun to do again. I have two beautiful warm blood mares and people often ask why I don't take them to shows. The truth is, working full time while trying to ride consistently enough to show, along with the costs involved, can make the whole process stressful and it starts to take the fun out of it. The pressure to ride every day and school for upcoming shows can be exhausting and after a tiring weekend at a show, returning to work on Monday just adds to the drain. Love riding my horses and don't really feel like I'm missing out on anything but there are certainly those moments when you see other people out and you start to wander. Before I lost my mare, I had basically stopped competing. Whilst I desperately wanted to do it, I was getting so stressed up before it and after, even if I did well. We both got tense and it just wasn't fun anymore. I felt it wasn't at all reflective of all the hard work we'd put in and how incredibly we'd progressed at home. And finally, the one that I saw come through consistently was around horse welfare. Now, of course, this has been a real trend at the moment, was particularly within dressage. We've seen a lot of discussion around riders, around discussions of putting the horse first, scandals obviously coming out before the Olympics. And even before that, there were, there were several. And actually afterwards, there have been several more. And so I think it's kind of a hot topic at the moment. But within that, we also have the rise of things like R+, which is positive 
positive reinforcement training within horses. I myself was invited to go to the US and learn about positive reinforcement training recently, which was incredible. And people definitely have told me in their DMs that as they learn more about positive reinforcement training, it's made them question their normal training methods. And somebody put it perfectly when they described a sort of cognitive dissonance between learning this new thing and then realizing what you've been doing before. And I don't think people have an answer yet. Some people acknowledging that pressure on the horses needs to be considered in a competition environment and should we be competing on horses? And I think it's just something that we're all trying to figure out. So let me share a few of those responses with you now. Along similar lines to others, I ride a horse who just finds competitions too much and shuts down, goes beautifully and is so happy when training. She will happily train in different or new locations, in groups or alone, but just shuts down at a competition and clearly doesn't enjoy it despite attempt of consistent and gentle exposure to it all. So listening to the horse and taking a back seat with competing and just going out and doing the things that she loves, training and hacking. Since I've been working so much more on connection and seeing the world through the horse's eyes, on top of speaking to people who've seen the horrors of some professional yards, I just don't want to invest in an industry that isn't horse first. Lower level and unaffiliated, this is not so much the case, but I do feel there is some inverse relationship between competitiveness level and consideration taken for the horse's natural needs slash welfare slash correct training. Clearly not all professionals, but sadly it doesn't seem to be a minority. More and more, I saw people putting the sport before the horse. It got me thinking deeply about how much pressure we put on horses and how people base the horse's value on what they can do for them e.g. people putting lame slash retired mares in foal so that they have a job. And honestly, it just gave me an ick on the whole horse community and industry as a whole. Then all these videos coming out of professional riders abusing their horses in training. I don't want any part in it anymore. I want to fuss my horses, happy hack, and use as much positive reinforcement training as possible. I used to live for show jumping and competitions and never envisage myself making this switch, but I'm loving it. It's like my prefrontal cortex developed and everything became clear as to what I want out of horses, which is actually nothing. I want to serve my horses, not for them to serve me. And finally, it's just not as much fun as having calm, fun hacks in butte places. And what's interesting about these trends is that they're not isolated to me and the conversations that I've been having on Instagram or the DMs that you've been sending me. And in fact, it really reminded me of the National Equine Welfare Council survey that was done in 2024 earlier this year. And some of the things that they saw on a national level, we're now seeing in this microcosm of my question. So. I want to share with you a few of the key findings because I think they relate to this. Over 50% of horse owners are struggling to provide basic care due to financial constraints. There's been a noticeable decline in participation in equestrian sports attributed to the rising costs and a shift in what people want from their equestrian experience. That is really interesting to me. So it's not just about the money, it's also about the experience both for the rider, but also for the horse in a competition environment. So these findings align closely with what we've seen across the Instagram story DMs and the themes that I've shared with you today. And I don't know that there is really an answer or a way forward at the moment. I think everybody's doing it on an individual basis and figuring out what works for them. I certainly have months where I feel like I wanna do more competition and then months where I feel like I don't. And that is mainly down to the fact I think I have a young horse and my own confidence in the time that I have. My hope is that as we get more opportunities to do other things with our horses, like maybe fun rides or rallies or lessons or arena hire, that actually there will be different ways of setting goals with your horses and it won't happen have to rely on the competition environment. I'd love your perspective on today's debate. Do you have a different opinion? Did anything resonate with you? Share in the comments below and let's make this into an ongoing conversation. And let me know what you want to debate in the next video. See you soon.